Hi guys, welcome to yet another video of Microsoft ERP Beginners Tutorial Series. In this particular series, we are trying to simplify all the complex topics in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations in a very simple and easy understandable way to our audience. If you like similar video, I strongly recommend you to go ahead and check the full course which is available in the description of this video which is uh, on Finance and Operations in Dynamics365Lab.com well uh, today's video is going to be a kind of a continuation of our previous video on intercompany process in the previous video we just started with the intercompany process we did some basic setups related with intercompany and in this video we will uh, deep a little more into intercompany by touching on the areas like direct deliveries etc so let's uh, get into the video and get started so in the previous video uh, we have um, created this vendor you know the vendor is created in the ADC motor the ADC legal entity that we have been using throughout the series right we have created a vendor this vendor represents the USMF company right so at the same time in the USMF company which is an another legal entity uh, where we are trying to do this uh, intercompany transaction so this particular legal entity is having a customer which is pointing to the ADC motor so we have created a vendor and a customer they both are connected with each other the intercompany customer vendors right we've already done this basic setup in the previous video and we have all, all also created an item in the previous video which is in this particular case is a break disk that we are trying to transact between two different companies so this is like a recap of the previous video so today's video we are going to explore the not only just the intercompany but also the intercompany direct delivery so we have done a video on direct delivery separately and the previous video is intercompany separately and direct delivery video uh, you should you not know, check out the course and I will, you will definitely find the video um, so that particular video uh, is completely focusing on the direct delivery you know so we are going to also touch upon those concepts now so let me first explain you this uh, scenario and then we will get into the video so um, we have a customer let's say for example you know this customer is trying to order uh like let's say a break from us in bulk you know so uh, they are placing an order to us to this particular company which is adc motor which is myself right so this adc motor company is receiving this particular order of course the order is received and it's a kind of a sales order right this sales order will point to this customer and the order is received but usually this kind of order we do not have stock this order needs to be fulfilled by another company which is my US company okay right now I am in the ADC motor and the US is another company it's USMF it's in US okay right now I am located in a different region let's say for example so since my uh, I do not have a stock from my sales order I go ahead and write a back-to-back -back PO right when I write the PO I have a vendor who is representing USMF we have just seen it right so we use the intercompany vendor and we create a back to back SO. We create a sorry back to back PO, meaning we create a purchase order from a sales order. Okay. So once we create a purchase order, the system automatically generates a sales order in the other legal entity because my purchase order is an intercompany purchase order. Okay. So there will be another sales order generated in this particular legal entity, and this sales order is for fulfilling my order. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and fulfill this particular order and I will send this particular order back to this particular company and the company will receive the PO and then once the PO is received the SO will be processed and then it will be fulfilling the customer's demand. This is a typical intercompany. We have already seen it. We are not going to see it again. So in the direct delivery intercompany the small twist here is the ADC motor places a PO and it orders it to the USMF company and the USMF company automatically gets a sales order. Now, let's assume that even though the customer is ordering, ordering, placing the order to the ADC motor company, let's assume that geographically the customer is located close to the USMF company. Let's say the customer is also in the US. Let's say the ADC motor company is in Canada or any other country. So even though I receive the order directly in one place to my ADC motor company um, where I consolidate all my orders, let's say for example, but still for fulfilling the order, if I receive the order back and then I send it to the customer, 
it doesn't make sense because it's the customer says that they cannot wait very long the lead time is more i will have to first wait and then i have a lead time between usmf to adc motor and there is a lead time between adc motor to the um to the customer right so there is a uh, the customer do not want to wait so long so as a strategy i am applying a concepts of direct delivery that we have already seen in this particular course in the past videos right so according to the direct delivery concept i am actually placing the order to the usmf legal entity and the usmf legal entity will fulfill the order and send it directly to the customer not to me back but to the customer because it doesn't make sense to come back to me and then go to the customer in this particular case the customer is located near the the oem and the oem is going to directly send to the customer this kind of business models are becoming more and more popular this is even in the automotive space for example where i am working on where um, the oems are delivering the car directly to the customer you know um avoiding all those middleman etc right it's not a very new concepts to some industry so we are going to use the same concept and um, directly deliver the goods to the customer which we can also call it as drop shipping or a direct delivery in microsoft dynamics 365 so how do we achieve this particular scenario is the question right so now let's assume that is this customer is placing the order so what we will do is we will try to first create a sales order from the sales order we will create a po and the po will create a so and the so will be fulfilled and the so is going to directly fulfill the customer's demand okay so that is called as intercompany direct delivery let's see how it works so let us go ahead and create a sales order in the system so all sales order let's uh, pick a customer in this particular case the customer is a us customer right so the us entity will directly fulfill this order so let's say that looks like a us customer and this customer is having this address is where the product needs to be delivered just remember the address here okay and then um, i'll say that i'll give a warehouse information even though i'm not going to fulfill from this warehouse so customer the the sales order is created and guys we already created an item for our intercompany scenario in the previous video we are using this item i have not made any changes to this item i just made a quick one change to this item for the direct delivery scenario to work on the automation mode then we will have to go ahead and make sure to turn on this direct delivery parameters we have discussed this in a very detailed way in direct delivery episode do watch it so you need to enable this and then we'll have to put a default warehouse that's very important and also we may need an approved vendor to avoid those annoying notifications or warnings we get while the purchase order gets created right so it's a mandatory for us to firstly have a default vendor in place and also maybe approved vendor and also the switch this is extremely important to turn on the direct delivery if you want this to work with automation we will maybe later turn off and i'll let you know how it works if we do not turn it on it doesn't work in automation if you are in a disabling it right for now i want the automation so i'm going to enable it so this is the only change i made to this particular uh, item meaning i added approved vendor and then i turned on this and then i linked a warehouse that's all no changes okay let's go ahead and use this item now and make create a purchase uh, create a sales order let me just create it for one quantity for now and uh, see as soon as i added this particular item the delivery type is already direct delivery because of the switch that we have enabled inside the item the system understands that this particular item line is a direct delivery item line okay so what is direct delivery is going to do since it's an automation mode it is actually going to automatically create a po okay so let me just save it so this is going to automatically create a po you know if we are not directly you know automating the direct delivery process by enabling the the parameters inside the item level 
we might need to manually create the direct delivery PO, right? So this in this particular case, or you may need to manually go ahead and set this to direct delivery, right? Because by default, this will be a stock option, right? Normally, when you add a, a sales order line, the line takes a delivery type of stock, right? But in order for the system to understand it's a direct delivery, you either turn on this parameter or maybe manually change this parameter to direct delivery. In this case, because of the parameter on, system automatically understands this item is a direct delivery item. And then the system automatically creates a purchase order and a sales order. So how does this purchase order create? Because within this particular item, we know that the purchase order needs to um, use this particular vendor as a default vendor. Since this vendor is involved, the system already knows that this is an intercompany vendor. Since the PO is created for an intercompany vendor automatically, the system says that whenever a PO is created for an intercompany vendor, like in the previous scenario we created, we started a scenario with a PO for intercompany vendor. As soon as we created a PO for intercompany vendor, uh, SO got created automatically in another company, right? So that's how since the PO got automatically created due to direct delivery, the SO also got created automatically in another legal entity. So that's why we have a PO and we also have an intercompany sales order. So the, the PO here in this particular sales order, you can view them um, as a reference link, I believe here. This is not an intercompany PO by the way because this is a main sales order facing the actual customer and we are only creating a direct delivery PO. For this sales order, this PO is not an intercompany PO, right? It's a normal PO. So we will also see the reference of this particular PO in the bottom here. So you see the reference of the PO here, right? So from this particular SO, I can move to the PO, right? So the PO and SO are linked with each other we are creating just a regular back-to-back -back PO from a sales order so since the direct delivery is enabled the PO is automatically created and the PO is created for a specific vendor sorry for repeating myself I wanted to keep it very clear for a beginners this is going to be a slightly tough to to understand that's the reason why I'm repeating myself again and again so the PO is created and the PO is created for the same quantity and the PO is fo follows the purchase order price SO follows the sales order price. So for the item, the pricing will vary depending on the document, depending on the trade agreement in this case. So the PO is created successfully, right? So um, for this particular PO, you have an intercompany SO, right? Because when the PO is created, there is an SO also got created, right? So meaning currently the, the customer placed an order and the SO is created and the PO is created and this particular PO places an order to the USMF company. So there is an SO here in the USMF company representing the order. So I can just click on the intercompany SO. The system will take me to the another legal entity which is USMF where we have the sales order. So the sales order is also having the same item with that particular line. And the very uh, interesting factor is, if I go back to the PO, the back-to-back -back PO, in the PO, if you check the address, the address is going to be the address of the customer, external customer, right? So in the usual case, for the PO, the address will normally be the warehouse address, right? So that the vendor delivers to the warehouse. No, in this particular case, it's going directly to the customer. So the PO is pointing to the actual customer address. Likewise, if I go to the SO, even the SO will actually not have the warehouse address. It is going to again go to the customer, right? So it is inheriting the customer address even inside the intercompany sales order. So the intercompany sales order is created. So let us confirm the sales order. So sales order is confirmed. And then let's go ahead and post the packing slip for the sales order. If you post the packing slip for the sales order, the other documents is going to also get affected because as soon as I say that I am actually sending the product out, which means that the product is right now in the route to the 
customer right which is delhi getting delivered to the customer so which means what happens to the uh, purchase order is the purchase order is also marked as received okay so now what happens to the sales order right so the original sales order behind this po is also in the delivered status they all happen automatically so many levels of automation is uh, going on due to this particular direct delivery process so if i go back to the intercompany sales order so we have already delivered this particular sales order now upon invoicing of the sales order we can also invoice the po automatically not the original sales order but the po automatically but in order for that to happen if you remember last time when we get into the vendor there is this intercompany setup right in the intercompany setup there was a purchasing policy where i said that this whole thing here is for direct delivery scenario right for example if i enable it then this means that the system when i post the um, the system will automatically post the purchase order when i post the intercompany sales order so this will also post the original sales order in this case i am not going to post the original post sales order i want the purchase order to be automatically invoiced upon the intercompany sales order is invoiced so since i am enabling it and i am saving it let me make sure it is saved now if i go to this area and invoice the sales order so this is going to automatically invoice the purchase order this is just to avoid lot of a lot of clicks right so if you do not turn on that parameter that i have just turned on then if i invoice the sales order the purchase order does not invoice so we will have to go ahead and manually invoice it so to avoid all of that just uh, whenever the usmf company invoices sends the invoice to the customer that automatically means that uh, the purchase order is also invoiced but the original sales order behind this purchase order right that is not it invoiced okay that is right now in the delivered status as we already discussed so this is the whole concepts of how the um uh, direct delivery intercompany work and now i can go ahead and invoice this particular uh, sales order to the end customer and uh, um, and uh, make sure all the transactions are in place so um again guys one more thing is um, um we've already seen it in the past about the uh, about this direct delivery in automation and direct delivery not in automation right so if at all you do not you know turn this on let's say for example if you do not turn this on even then it is kind of automation it will, it will still work but just that when you are actually creating a sales order the initial sales order for the external customer so let's say i'm using the same customer again so to the same warehouse so if i key in the item so here uh, you see that by default it is in stock it's not uh, changed and uh, the direct delivery is not enabled so that's the reason why it is happening and uh, you you can either you know enable the direct delivery flag from here or maybe you can go ahead and um, um, in, now that the purchase order is not auto created right you can actually create a direct delivery po right when you create a direct delivery po the system is again going to trigger a po and trigger an s1 all that as usual or you can also like change this to direct delivery and then just uh, save it and the purchase order creation process is triggered right so to just to avoid it what we are doing here is to enabling this this actually works in automation mode next time when i create a purchase um, sales order is going to create a purchase order automatically so this is some of the ideas i wanted to provide you on the uh, direct delivery process linked with intercompany hope this video is useful see you again in yet another video guys until then bye take care